The Chinese New Year is about collaborating with your family and really getting together and have the time that you want to have with your family. It's called Chuanjia. What they eat in China um, to celebrate, they eat um, dumplings. We had these little performances and for Chinese New Year's on February 8th. Bit super scary dragon. But now I'm not scared of it. Out of the mouths of children. Welcome back. Judy Chu was first elected to the United States Congress in 2009. She currently chairs the Congressional Asian Pacific American Caucus, and she joins us right here in our studio in Washington. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Nice to have you. Well, you are the chair of this caucus in Congress. We were talking earlier on with our guests uh, on the show, and we were talking about the fact that both New York and San Francisco now have this, the Lunar New Year, as an official holiday. How important is that? It is so wonderful, and it is a sign of growing acceptance of the Lunar New Year as an important festival for everybody around the world, but also it's a recognition of the Asian American population here in the United States. Would you like to see that expanded? Oh, definitely. In fact, um, I, it would be great for uh, the major cities around the United States to do this, and then hopefully we can have a national movement. You know, there are significant uh, Asian groups in the United States, you know, big groups of people who live all over the country. Um, do you think enough is being done to raise awareness about Asian heritage, about things like the Lunar New Year, the Chinese New Year, and what that means? It's always uh, an effort, and uh, we need to make sure that our Asian American communities are doing as much as possible to create this kind of awareness about our culture, about our heritage. Uh, we want to have more shows on television, and now we have Fresh Off the Boat uh, uh, and uh, other shows. So we want to make sure that people know that we are part of America. And uh, at a personal level, you and your family, I mean, do you celebrate the Lunar New Year very differently from, say, the people in China? Well, as, as a child growing up, uh, uh, we would uh, have dinner together uh, on Lunar New Year. Uh, we would uh, uh, not cut our hair and not, and not sweep out the house uh, on the Lunar New Year Day. Uh, and we would uh, always, of course, have the red envelopes. We looked right. forward to that. So there are all kinds of beliefs and traditions attached to this, which you observe here as well. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, we have the U.S. presidential election campaign. I mean, we see it all the time on our screens right now. Um, you know, we've had our first, still have our first African-American president, Barack Obama. There's a possibility we could soon have a female president, the first one in this country, Hillary Clinton. What about an Asian-American president? I mean, there are people like yourself in positions of power. Should there be more people like yourself in positions of power, even in the White House? Well, today uh, it is so encouraging to see uh, the diversity up there at the highest level of our government. There was a time when we could never have imagined that we'd have a, uh, an African-American president or a woman president, and yet now both are within grasp. Uh, yes, it is very encouraging, and I think that, that, that we could definitely have an Asian-American president, but we need to make sure that that pipeline is there. So that means having more Asian Americans elected to Congress uh, and also more Asian Americans on our top levels of appointed government, such as in our cabinet level positions. What are the current barriers that lie on their way to, be, to getting elected to high office? It, it's not easy to get elected to Congress. Uh, it means that you have to have a whole infrastructure in place. You have to have credibility with the voters. Uh, you have to be able to do all those things that candidates do, uh, such as uh, debating and, and uh, raising money. Um, so that takes a little bit of experience, uh, and uh, that's why we encourage a pipeline. Uh, mm -hmm. That is, we encourage Asian Americans to run for their local positions, such as on city councils and on school boards. We try to get more people into our state legislatures. Those are the ones that will be able to make it to Congress. Right. So it starts at the local level, doesn't it? Yes. What about uh, your path to the U.S. Congress? I mean, how did you get there? It took me 30 years to get here. I started on a school board, then went to a city council, then the California State Assembly, and then the state's elected tax board, the Board of Equalization. So it was a long road, uh, and 
I just uh, hope that uh, it doesn't take quite as long for people in the future to be able to, to get to Congress. I was looking at some figures that were published in The Economist, and it said that 49% of Asian Americans have a bachelor's degree compared to 28% for the general population. In terms of immigration, 61% of recent immigrants from Asia have a bachelor's degree compared to 30% of recent non-Asian uh, immigrants to this country. Um, I mean, those are wide disparities. Uh, what has it done for Asian Americans? Has it made life better for them? Has it given them better opportunities? Well, we have a bifurcated population. We do have many highly educated Asian Americans, but I do want to remind the public that we also have Asian Americans that have come here that are not doing so well. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we always try to remind our federal uh, government about that. Um, there are Pacific Islanders and, and there are Southeast Asians that have not attained uh, a bachelor's degree, and in some cases, not even a high school degree, and they deserve that kind of help. Uh, we also have a situation where even though we have highly educated people, they may not be getting the kinds of positions that are commensurate with it. We call this the glass ceiling, or in mm -hmm. some cases, the bamboo ceiling, where we may have many Asian Americans that are, for instance, engineers in a particular company, but not in those top level management positions. And what kind of grassroots work is being done to overcome that? So in those, in those companies themselves, uh, fortunately, there are Asian American groups that, that are organizing, trying to give those employees the tools that they need. And there, there are nonprofits that have been formed uh, that uh, are trying to teach these kinds of tools. These are Asian American leadership types of training programs that will help Asian Americans. But there also is advocacy that we must do with those biggest of companies to make sure that they are giving those opportunities to Asian Americans. Right. Getting back to the Lunar New Year where we started, uh, I want to ask you, I asked one of our previous guests this as well, significance of the Year of the Monkey for you. Uh, well, of course, this happens every 12 years, mm -hmm. but uh, they say that uh, this is supposed to be uh, a year where there's a lot of activity. Uh, somebody born in the year of the monkey is mischievous, but also intelligent and very, very active, and that the year could be that way as well. And it's not a short festival, is it? isn't it? It lasts a week. Well, I can tell you that I've been going to Lunar New Year events uh, for the past week and will continue to be going to them. It is a long process, and in Asia it's at least two weeks. Well, Representative, thanks for coming in, and Happy New Year to you. Thank you. With this being the Year of the Monkey, as we just said, we asked the Heat's own Matt Shirley to help us understand the connection we have with those largely adorable creatures. The Year of the Monkey. Not just the Great Monkey King, but your everyday kind. Monkeys are primates. Let's look at some. Baboon, wait your turn. Stop eating the scenery. First, the egg. It's not actually a monkey, but another primate. Still, they're good friends. An ape has no tail. Let's meet our two favorite great apes. The gorilla. No, please don't shake the camera. Our other favorite great ape, the chimpanzee. They eat everything they can, similar to some of us. Maybe even too similar. Now that we've got apes off our back, back to monkeys. You have old world and new world. They all have tails. New World monkey tails can grab onto things. Old World monkeys can't do that. Whatever you do, please do not tie a monkey's tail into a knot. There are more than 250 kinds, including the howler and the golden. There are more differences among these primates, but for now, remember that all monkeys are our friends. So let's peel some bananas and welcome 2016, the year of the monkey. Sorry, Baboon, we're out of time.